Hello, Anna Reynolds, friends and family. I'm back with another Books and Cooks to share with you. Today, I'd like to share the story of the leprechaun trap. And this is a story of a naughty leprechaun who visits a family every year around St. Patrick's Day. And the trouble he causes is just amazing when the kids try to capture him. I would have shared this book with you during the school week if we were in school this week, but since we weren't, I hope you can still enjoy it, even though it's a few days late. Sit back and enjoy the story of the leprechaun trap. And when we're done, I'm going to share a recipe with you that my children used to make to try to catch a leprechaun every year. The Leprechaun Trap by David and Kelly Clinch. Every year at the beginning of March, the little leprechaun doll magically appeared sitting innocently at the foot of Emma's bed. The children guessed that he had come to them from Ireland, perhaps sneaking into their granny's suitcase on one of her many trips from Dublin, and they named him Liam. Once Liam arrived, the children knew that he would wake up each morning and they would discover half-eaten potatoes on the kitchen floor or cereal boxes spilled over on the counter or sprinkles of shamrocks on the breakfast table because this little leprechaun doll sitting in the middle of it always wanted to make a mess and then he would just fall fast asleep. Daddy told the children that they were lucky to have a leprechaun in their house because if they could catch this leprechaun who caused mischief on St. Patrick's Day, then they would have a chance of stealing his gold. But try as they might, they really never could catch him. And this year was proving to be no different. Emma woke up on that first day in March and she found Liam the doll sitting at the end of her bed with a little twinkle in his eye. She grinned and yelled to Patrick and to her baby sister Molly, hey, our leprechaun doll is back. Again, said Patrick, running in to see that doll, that we had better start working on another plan to catch him right away because I really want his gold this time. Yay, I love plans, said little Molly, who was only three. But then after thinking for a moment, she said, what's a plan? What's a leprechaun? Why do we even need a plan? Emma let Molly hold the doll and then she reminded her that Liam was a magic little fellow that would visit them in March every year and awaken every night until St. Patrick's Day and try to cause trouble in their house. Emma, who was 10, had been trying to catch the leprechaun for as long as she could remember. Daddy says Liam is lucky, but I think he's just trouble, said Patrick, who was seven, and he had built his first leprechaun trap when he was only two. He looks harmless now, but you just wait and see, Molly. Even if we lock him up in a cupboard or if we tie him to the bed before we go to sleep, he always manages to get away. And then when we wake up, he does stuff that's even naughtier. Patrick looked down at Liam and added, if we don't capture him this St. Patrick's Day, He's just going to keep coming back every year and he's going to make bigger and bigger messes and we will never get his gold. Daddy thinks that Liam feels homesick for Ireland, said Emma. He says that leprechauns should be in Ireland making shoes for fairies and earning gold, not here in America causing trouble. Daddy's, Daddy always says that the leprechaun was very cute. Molly hugged that doll and smiled. She says, I think he's cute too. No, 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 silly Emma. Silly, replied Emma. Cute does not mean cute like a puppy. Cute means naughty and clever. Remember, Molly, Daddy says St. Patrick's Day is the only day of the year where anyone could ever catch a leprechaun. And that, said Patrick, with a very serious look on his face, is why we need a plan. Well, as usual, the trouble began immediately after Liam had arrived one morning. The children woke up to find poor Patrick's feet tied to his bedpost and Liam was holding the string. The next night, they tried putting Liam inside the toy box and tried to pile books on top of him, but he managed to get out. Then they found all the water in the toilets had turned green and Liam was napping in the bathtub. They tried locking him in their pantry one night, but the next day, their dog Murphy had green footprints all over him 
and Liam was in the dog's cage, holding a paintbrush from Molly's art set. Still, stone asleep again. So the day before St. Patrick's Day, Emma called a meeting in the playroom. She said, we have got to do something about this. This trouble is getting worse. And we're only one day away from St. Patrick's Day. One day left to catch him. But what kind of traps should we make, said Patrick, because none of the traps we've used before have ever worked. Well, we're just gonna have to come up with something better. Emma answered, dumping all of the pictures of the past year's traps out. There has to be something we haven't tried. And they have all these traps that they made from years before. Pictures, anyway. Well, last year, we tried putting a potato for him to eat at the bottom of this big box, hoping he would just, like, fall in. Remember that? Yes, said Emma, holding up that photo. Look at the big mess he made. And then the kitchen was destroyed, and there were, like, chairs on the table, and trash was turned all over, and then Liam was even gone. Here's the year we left some Irish bacon in a mouse trap. Remember we found one of his little shoes stuck in the trap the next morning? He even dropped a few gold coins, said Patrick. We almost had him that year. Molly peered curiously at the photo. I remember, said Emma, as she found the next photo, and I remember the mess, too. He wrote, you can't catch me, on the windows, and then he disappeared. Was Mommy mad at him, asked Molly, with her freckled nose all scrunched up? Oh, yeah, really mad, Patrick said. He remembered his mom washing all the windows that morning. Well, we've tried Irish food, music, and even shamrock, said Emma, as they looked at the photos. I give up. Well, maybe he would like an Irish fairy, said Molly. Don't be silly, Molly. Where are we going to get an Irish fairy, said Patrick. Hey, wait a minute, said Emma. That might not be a bad idea. Molly, go get that doll that Grandma brought you the last time we were visiting in Dublin. Molly, who was excited to finally be included into the plan, scuttled up the stairs and headed for her bedroom, dragging her blanket behind her. What are you planning, Emma? asked Patrick. Well, he's homesick for Ireland. He wants to make shoes for fairies. Again, why don't we give him what he wants? An Irish fairy that needs some shoes. Molly and I will dress up the Irish doll to look like a fairy and we'll take her shoes off, said Emma. And I will make the trap, added Patrick, snickering. Exactly, said Emma, but you just better make it good this time. Molly ran into the playroom, beaming and holding up her Irish doll. Here she is, here she is, did I have a good idea? Oh yeah, you did, said Emma. Now let's get busy. So that night, the night before St. Patrick's Day, they stayed up really late making and setting the trap. Molly and Emma made the doll look like an Irish fairy. And now the children had really never seen a real Irish fairy, but they had visited Ireland many times and they were pretty sure that Irish fairies did not have wings. So instead they made a beautiful dress for her, green with green and white silk, carefully cutting it to fit just right. Then Emma placed a bit of Irish cheese on a little tiny dish from her old tea set on one side and then a sprinkle of shamrocks on the other. And while they were doing that, Patrick built a small little house out of popsicle sticks for the fairy to sit in and he covered it with leaves since daddy told him that Irish fairies always live under bushes. Then Molly painted a rainbow on the door of the house with her art set because she remembered daddy saying that leprechauns always keep their pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. Finally, Patrick found a small bag of dirt he had collected when they climbed Crow Patrick Mountain in Ireland last summer. And he piled that in front of the fairy as well. He will smell Ireland. He won't be able to resist coming in, grinned Patrick, smoothing his hand over that pile of dirt. And when he steps inside to look at the fairy, he's gonna trip over the string under the dirt and then the door will fall from the top of the house and trap him inside. They tested the trap again and again with Patrick's action figures playing the part of the leprechaun, and finally they were satisfied with their work. If we catch him, I'm keeping all the gold, said Patrick. He looked proudly at his creation, placing it carefully on the kitchen table for Liam to find. 
Emma, Patrick, and Molly fell into bed completely exhausted from all their hard work, but sure that they had a very good chance of catching Liam and winning his gold. You just need a bit of Irish luck, offered Daddy as he kissed them goodnight. You will all need some of that. If I find another huge mess in this house like last year, Mommy said, kind of laughing. What are you going to do with all that gold if you catch it? That's what I want to know, said Dad. Well, I think I'm going to share it with all my friends. Yes, that's a great idea, said Daddy. Mommy tucked Molly's covers tight around her, and then they turned off the light. Patrick was the first one up in the morning. No feet tied to the bed. He thought to himself, hopefully, as he jumped and headed for the stairs. No green toilet water, shouted Emma, running past the bathroom in the hall. Molly scrambled down the stairs after him. Wait for me, wait for me. Uh-oh, said Patrick as he turned into the kitchen. What is it, asked Emma, and then she turned the corner herself. Oh, no, she exclaimed with her jaw dropping open. Molly ran into the kitchen and stopped. Her eyes were wide, and she screamed, Daddy, come quick. The first thing they saw was that poor little fairy doll hanging upside down from a ceiling fan in the kitchen, spinning around and around with the string tightly wrapped around her. The dish that had been filled with the cheese was now laying broken on the floor. Beside it sat milk container filled with bright green milk and lots of little shamrocks. Ugh, I'm not drinking that, declared Emma in disgust. The flour and the sugar containers in the kitchen were strewn on their sides on the counter and little green footprints were running in circles through the white mess as their leprechaun must have danced a jig in all the snow. Every single drawer and cupboard in that kitchen was open with knives and forks and pots and pans all scattered everywhere. Green glitter shone from the floor and a few gold coins were sprinkled about. The trap itself, oh my gosh, it looked like a tornado had hit it. It was a tangled mess of wood and dirt and turned up leaves and shreds of silk from the fairy's dress. That's all that remained. And no sign of Liam anywhere. As I was reading that, I hope you were picturing what that kitchen must have looked like because I have a great picture to really show you. Did your picture in your mind match this picture? Look at that mess that leprechaun caused. My gosh, there's the green milk. There it is tied to the fan. My gosh, all the flour and sugar, the pots and the pans, the broken trap. This is not good. I don't think mom's going to be happy. Then they heard barking and yelping from the laundry room and it was their dog Murphy. He ran into the kitchen with a bright green sign attached to his tail and Emma just yanked it off while Molly gave Murphy a hug. What does it say? asked Patrick. It says, see you next year. We didn't catch him. Daddy walked around the kitchen with the video camera filming all that damage. When in came mom, she just stood there with her hands on her hips. Look at her face. Uh-oh, I think mommy's mad. This has got to stop, declared mom, looking around the room at all the destruction. I've had it, no more leprechaun traps. Oh, don't blame us, Mommy, said Patrick. Liam's the one who made the mess. Oh, don't worry. Daddy put down the camera and gave Mom a big hug. Come on, we'll all clean it up together, and then we'll go out for a great big Irish breakfast. How about that? The children cheered, and Emma started picking up bits of the broken dishes while Patrick and Molly closed all the cupboards and drawers. Ugh, we almost caught him. I was sure it was gonna work this time, mumbled Patrick, sweeping up the last of the dirt from the floor and slipping those two gold coins he found into his pocket for his collection. Hey, can I try that green milk, asked Molly, and she tried to lift up the container to take a sip. No, 
Who knows what's in there, Mommy grumbled, and she grabbed the milk away from Molly, and she just, like, poured it down the sink. Daddy smiled as he pulled that fairy down from the ceiling fan, and he untangled her from the string. That leprechaun is cuter than I thought, he said. And remember we said in Ireland, that means naughtier. And the last page shows how they built their leprechaun trap. Look at that. If you really enjoyed this story, you could go online. I'm sure you can find it and you can reread it. Or you can even order it off of Amazon and add it to your own book collection. I don't know how many of you might have tried to catch a leprechaun in years past, but I have two children. One is 30 now and one is 26. And when they were little, they tried catching a leprechaun many, many, many times. And we had the same thing happen at our house. We would make a trap. We would put something in the trap to lure him in. And he would always come. But we never had him in the morning. Just the mess he would leave behind. I have a picture. Unfortunately, all of the um, leprechaun things that we've caught over the years are in my classroom at Anna Reynolds right now. But I have a picture that I'm going to share with you of all the clothes that we have caught from our leprechaun over the years. We started with a sock and then we got his pants and then his little jacket. We've caught a couple of hats. He had like a little iPod we caught one year, even a cell phone, a little diamond earring, some ripped underwear. One day he came on a scooter and the wheel had fallen off and he left us his little wrench and his little um, screwdriver as if he was trying to put it back together. We've had our toilet paper turned into shamrock toilet paper. We've had our milk turn green, our eggs turn green. The way we tried catching our leprechaun was not with gold. We ended up making a rainbow cake every year. That's the only time we ever made this cake is around St. Patrick's Day. And we would make it and we would put it under the trap, hopefully kept to catch him. And I was wondering, would you like to maybe see how I made that quick rainbow cake? I could do it in my kitchen right now. You could watch me, then you could try making one. Even though it's too late to catch a leprechaun this year, the cake is still delicious to eat. Okay, ready? Let's go do that. Okay, so here we are back in my kitchen. And I hope you enjoyed the story of the leprechaun trap. And I do hope maybe next year you try making a leprechaun trap because it could be lots of fun. And if you don't have any ideas, go online. Lots of kids have posted pictures of traps they've tried to make. But the most important thing is you have to decide what is going to lure that leprechaun into your trap. What are you putting under your trap to make him or her want to come in? So you could go to your mom's jewelry box, grab some gold maybe, but you, know, you gotta be careful about that because if you get one or you don't get one, he may actually run off with the gold. So we had to think of something he might want. And I thought, well, I know that they love rainbows. Their pot of gold lives at the end of a rainbow. So you know me, I've got to cook all the time. So I said to my kids, we're going to make a special rainbow cake every year and it'll just be used at St. Patrick's Day. So let me show you how to do it. So simple. Let me put that book down. All right. Two things you need. Start with just a cake mix. It should be like a white cake mix because you're gonna be changing this to the colors of the rainbow, all right? Any white cake mix, any brand you have. You're also going to need some food coloring. Now, I wanna make this into a little bit of an art slash science project as well. So I know that in a rainbow, there are six colors. And I remembered it by this. My uh, teacher once told me to remember Roy G. Biv for the colors of the rainbow. So it goes like this, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So that's like purple, indigo and violet. That's like um, different shades of purple. So. Roy G. Biv is the way I remember the colors of the rainbow. So that's what we're going to do. We're gonna make a cake with all of these colors. And it, it looks so beautiful when you're done that I know if the leprechaun doesn't want it, you certainly will. And he really only needs a little piece so the rest can be for you and your family anyway. Watch, this is what we're going to do. 
So get your cake mix, dump it in. I've decided not to mix the cake mix with you this time just because it's loud and it's noisy and my KitchenAid mixer is in a whole nother room right now. So turn the back of the box over, it'll tell you what to add to the cake mix. So I dumped in the cake mix and then it asked for three eggs, which I cracked and put in. It asked for a third of a cup of oil, any kind of oil you have, and then it asked for one and a third cups of water. So you could use your measuring cups. If you only have a one third measuring cup, then you have to do a little bit of math to decide, well, one and a third. I know that that's four of these because I know that a third plus a third plus a third is one plus one is one third. So you could even do a little bit of math when you're cooking if you're super good at it. So anyway, I already did that part and I mixed it. There it is, okay? It's just white cake batter, all right? I know you can follow directions, use your reading skills, you can make a cake mix. All right, here comes the fun part. Now I put six different color cups down and I'm going to turn each one into the color of the rainbow, Roy G. Bib. Red, orange, yellow, green, and blue, purple, or just purple. All right, watch, here we go. So I start by pouring some into this part, red. That one's gonna be red. That one's gonna be orange. Ready? This one's gonna be yellow. And it's okay if you make a mess. That's what you do in the kitchen. It's gonna be green, okay? This one will be our blue. And the last cup, let me scrape some of this out with my spatula. Spatulas come in so handy because you can get every last drop out. And as an Italian cook, we get every last drop out. We waste nothing, okay? We are like, nope, 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 there's more in it, we must use it, okay? It does not have to be perfectly even. It's okay if you have a little more red or a little more yellow or whatever, but that looks good, okay? Now, you can use any cake pan you want. I'm just gonna use this, throw, this throwaway cake pan because when I'm done, I'm going to bring this to a friend and drop it on their doorstep. I have a friend who has two little girls and she is going to love to know that a little rainbow cake got dropped on her doorstep later. So I'm gonna use this so that I don't have to worry about getting it back. I sprayed it with a little bit of Pam in the bottom just so that the cake won't stick. All right, here we go. I am only using, Mrs. Schumacher would love this, red, yellow, and blue. I'm only using three colors and I'm going to make all the colors of the rainbow. Ready, let's begin. You're like, but wait, you don't have any green. Eh, we can do it, watch. Some of you might know this already. So red is just gonna be red. Now you decide how red you want it by how many drops you put in. I've done this so many times. I know that red is a hard color to make. So I usually put about 10 drops in for the red, okay? And I'm gonna leave that. I'm not even gonna mix it yet. So there's my red. Yellow. Easy, I've got yellow. I'll do the same thing. Yellow's another one. I like my colors to be super bright, so I'm gonna drop in yeah, five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine, 10 drops. It doesn't matter. You could have dark yellow or light yellow, and you can always go back and add more. All right, red, oh wait, orange. This one was supposed to be orange, so we'll put that one there. Red, orange, oh dear. How am I gonna do that? Hmm. Who knows how to make orange out of these colors? I wish you were here to tell me, but I think I hear you screaming red and yellow, right? So this time to make orange, I wanna make sure that I put the equal number of drops. All right, ready? So let's do this one, ready? One, two, three, four, five of the yellow. And I think if I do five red, we might get the orange. One, two, three, four, five. All right, we'll see how that turns out. Okay, so red, orange, there's the yellow, green. Hmm, come on, scream at me. How do I make green out of these colors? How do I do it? Is it these two colors? Is it these two colors? I think I hear you telling me it's blue and yellow. Let's see if we're right. Here we go. One, two, three, four, 
five. There's the yellow. We'll do five more of blue. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. All right, that's supposed to be green. We'll see what happens when we mix it. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue. Easy, I got blue. That's easy, right? So I love dark blue, so I'm just gonna just put a whole bunch of blue, okay? I really like dark colors. I just think it makes the cake look more fun. Purple, let me tell you, how am I gonna do purple? Is it yellow and red? Is it blue and red? Is it blue and yellow? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Oh, I hear you, and you are right. It would be blue and red. Let me tell you something about purple. Very hard color to make. If you put too much, it starts to turn a little brown. If you don't put enough, it doesn't really look purple. It's not going to be a bright purple. It's just gonna be an okay purple. I'll show you. One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna start with five. So I think that's what I've had the most success with in the past. One, two, three, four, five. All right, that one's supposed to be purple. We'll see what happens when we get there. Sometimes we have to play with that color. All right, first one was red. Here we go. Mix. All you do is mix it up. I love to use these little plastic cups because they're fun because you can see them. Little hands can hold them if you want to do this with some younger brothers and sisters. And then when you're done, you don't even have to wash it. You can just toss it away. All right. I think that's pretty good. That's about the best we're going to get for red. It's more of like an orangey red. I could add more, but it's never going to be a super cherry red. But that's going to be the red. Okay, here comes the red and the yellow for orange. Ready? Let's see if it starts making orange. It should. I'm gonna mix, 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 mix. Oh, I see it. Do you see it happening right before your eyes? That's what makes it so much fun when you do it through this little plastic cup. Look at that. That looks like orange, right? I see the difference between the red and the orange. Do you? I do. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm gonna leave it. I don't really think I wanna add too much more orange. I think that's a really pretty orange, and I'm gonna leave that. Red, orange, yellow, here we go. If this doesn't become bright enough, I will add more yellow, because yellow's a fun color. I don't know, I think I did pretty good again. Well, I'm having an awesome day mixing my colors. Well, look at that, we're doing art, we're doing science, we're doing math. We, if we had the, if I, you had to read the recipe, look at that, so much learning can happen when you're in your kitchen and fun. Look at that. Whoa. All right. Remember Roy G. Biv. We've got the red. We've got the orange. We've got the yellow. What do we need next? Green. So here we put the blue and the yellow for the green. Ready? Here we go. Look at that. It's like magic. I feel like a magician when I do things like this. My gosh, I have even made rainbow pancakes before because you could just make pancake batter and you could do the same thing. Then you make a red pancake, an orange pancake, and then you make a stack. That's a great breakfast. I might show you that another time, but I've done a lot of things with rainbow colors in my kitchen. Rainbow salad, fruit salad, green salads. Oh, I hope someday I'll show you all those fun rainbow recipes. And there's all tons of rainbow books for the springtime. What do you think about that green? Do you like it? I do. Here we go. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue. Remember, we just put the blue in there, so that should turn out fine. I'm a little nervous about the purple. The purple is the one that gives me the most trouble every time, but I don't know. I have confidence in myself this time. Look at this. Oh my gosh, this is making me want to eat it just like this before I even cook it. All right, there it is. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, all from one cake mix. Okay, here's the hard one, purple. Remember I told you it's not gonna be bright purple, but let's see what happens. We put in the red and the blue, and we tried to do equal amounts. I don't know, let's see what happens. I hope I didn't put too much and make it turn brown. Oh, no, actually, I don't know. I'm a rock star cook this time. I'm happy with this purple. Look at this. I think that's a good purple. I mean, really, it's the best you can get. I, I've done this in, there are other food colorings that you can try, but these work perfectly fine. Why make it more difficult for yourself if this is what you have in your kitchen? And there I have the colors of my rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, Roy 
G Biv. Ready? Now what do I do? Well, there's lots of ways to do this. You could take a small cake pan and you could do one layer of red, one layer, and you could like stack it like that, okay? And then you, it, would, it would bake and you would kind of have a layered cake, okay? Doesn't always work out that well. Sometimes the middle stays raw because it's like too high. So this is a really fun, easy way. And you could be so creative. It's like art and science and everything all together. So I'm gonna take this pan and I'm gonna start with the red. It does not matter where you dump it, okay? So I'm gonna start, I usually start like in one corner and I go red, okay? Dumping it right in the corner. Good enough, all right? All right, put that one aside. Now, I'm not going to dump the orange right next to the red because they're too much of the same color. And I'm an artist and I want it to look super pretty when I'm done. So I'm gonna go the opposite corner for the orange. Yes, they're going to mix, but I don't want them totally together, all right? Yellow, where do I want to put the yellow? It's totally up to me. Do I want to put it in the middle, to the right, to the left? Where should I go? Where should I go? Oh, I heard you say left. Okay, I'm going to my left, your right. Here it is, in goes the yellow. Isn't this looking beautiful? It's almost too pretty to even worry about cooking. It's like, I feel like I could eat it just like this, but mm, might get a tummy ache. Look at how that's looking so far. Red, orange, yellow, green, obviously. Okay, look, they're already starting to go together on their own. I'm gonna dump the green right here, obviously. That makes it look super fun right there in the corner. All right, here comes the green. Your oven should be on 350 degrees, preheating, and it will be ready to pop in because that's exactly what the recipe calls for, okay? Here comes the, no, we're not putting it on because I already, we don't need to put it on right now. Okay, here we go, blue. I'm gonna dump the blue there and look where else I'm dumping it, like here. Like no one said you couldn't split up the colors. Remember, you're the artist. You do it your way because every rainbow cake will be different, all right? How's it looking? And the last color of the rainbow purple. Now I can just swirl it all around, but I know I'm just gonna put a little blob here. And then I'm gonna put a little blob here. I'm gonna put a little blob here. And last but not least, eh, maybe one right here on top of the blue. Again, I have never made a rainbow cake exactly like this one because they all come out different. Now, I can leave it just like, I'm sorry, just like this, all right? And I could put it in the oven and it will bake. But sometimes when you do that and then you go to cut someone a piece, they don't get all the colors. They'll just get the colors that are in that corner. So what you do is you take a plastic knife or a butter knife and you just kind of, it's called marbling, and you just run your knife up and down and then you go back and forth and you do it as many times as you want. And you can even go kind of diagonal if you want, just so that you know that you are swirling your rainbow cake so that everybody's gonna get some. Now, do not overdo it. If you do it too many times, it ends up just looking like mud and you won't see the separated colors. Like, I think that's good. I think anybody getting a piece is gonna get a little bit of every color if I leave it just like that, okay? So then your oven would be on 350, that's what it said, and it says to bake it, or 325, it depends on the recipe, and then you bake it until it's done. How do you know it's done? Well, you could put the timer on and check it. When you stick a toothpick in and it comes out clean, it's done. Me, I just touch the top of it. If it springs back, it's done. I never overbake. Don't let it turn brown. There's no reason for that. It should stay looking like all these colors. And if you touch the top and it's not wibble, wibbly, wobbly, wet inside, it's done, okay? So now you pop it in the oven at 350. So I would open my oven, I would pop it in, I would turn on my light, I would set my 350 and my timer and I would wait, okay? Obviously, I don't want you to have to wait for that to bake, so I did one last night for you. It is gonna look very different than that one because 
It's the way I swirled it last night. One trick I have, after you bake your rainbow cake, put it in the freezer, okay? Let me get mine out. Here it is. Here's my rainbow cake from last night, all right? I've got all the colors of the rainbow in it. It was baked, you see, it's not brown, but when I touch it, it's nice and hard now, and you're like, oh, no, I don't wanna eat a hard cake. This is a trick. If you freeze your cake, before you frost it, it's easier to frost. I'm not eating it like this. I'm a frosting loving girl. I'm putting frosting on this cake, all right? Now, you have choice, any color. You could do all the colors of the rainbow for frosting. You could do all white and just put rainbow sprinkles. But I usually make this around St. Patrick's Day, so what color do you think I usually put on top? Green, you're right. So what I usually do is I just buy some vanilla ice cream, uh, ice cream vanilla frosting, and then I just take green food coloring and I swirl it in ahead of time. Now I made this very light because I like a light green on the top. I just think it looks pretty, okay? You could make it darker if you want. And all I did was put the blue and the yellow together and then I made some green, all right? So now watch what I'm going to do. I can even use that same knife that I've swirled it with. Now I wanna frost my cake because it's going to look prettier and it's going to taste better. And I almost like it to be like green and white, almost like a mint green. I don't know, I just think it makes it look pretty. It just makes me wanna eat it. I always say to everybody, you eat with your eyes. If something looks delicious to your eyes, it makes your mouth want to eat it. So I'm not worrying so much about if there's a little bit of white in with my grain. I'm totally fine with that, okay? And I'll just go out to the edge. Look what's happening. No crumbs on my cake. You know when you try to sometimes do this on a cake and you can start getting crumbs onto the uh, frosting, they start pulling away from the cake? Even when it's cooled, it's because that's what, it's hard to frost a cake. The crumbs always wanna pull onto the frosting. All right, so I do this, and now you can make a pattern. You can go back and forth this way. You can do whatever you want, okay? All the way to the edge, okay? Like that, make sure everybody's got frosting. I also have this fun little scooper thingy. I think this is fun. I sometimes like to take it and just like make lines on my cake. You don't have to have this. It's just, hey, it's something I have in my kitchen, and sometimes I like to use it. Sometimes I make the lines go this way, okay? There's no rules of how to frost your cake, all right? And if I notice that there's a part that's not getting enough frosting, I just go back over it with my little spatula, okay? Look at that, pretty, all right? I know you think it's pretty, but Mrs. Gagliardi's a perfectionist and I don't think it's that pretty yet. So then I usually will have like a bag on the side with could be white frosting, could be yellow frosting, could be green frosting with a little tip on it. You don't have to do this part, but I like to then go around my edges and make it like a little pattern because I think it just makes the cake look prettier. And on top of it, whoever ends up getting the edge of the cake gets double frosting. And I am a frosting lover. I could literally eat it out of the can. Now look, doesn't that look even prettier? But it's still not pretty enough. The last bit, add some rainbow sprinkles. So I go like this, right on top of my cake. Look at that. I could add the whole thing. I could just add a little bit of it. Anything you have, look at it. I got lots of colors of the rainbow in there. And then we had our rainbow cake. And then what did we do? We would cut a tiny piece. We'd put it on a tiny dish and we would put it under our trap. I don't have any of the kids' traps anymore, but I'll get a tiny dish, I'll show you. We used to do like a tiny dish like this. I'm gonna even cut a tiny piece, or at least a bigger piece, so we can see what it looks like inside. All right, we ready? Let's see. Uh, let's see, I guess I'll cut from here. All right, right now it's a little bit frozen, but it will thaw. And another thing about rainbow cakes that are frozen or any cakes that are frozen, when they thaw, they're moist. That means they're not dry to eat. Oh my gosh. 
Oh, some of this looks good. Oh, that one has a lot of red in it. Let me cut another piece. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I want a little more color. You could just keep cutting till you get a piece that you really like. All right, let's see. Oh, look at this one. This one's got green and pink and purple, a little bit of yellow. We've got that one. Let me cut another one. It's a good thing I have an extra one that I'm gonna give to a friend. I'm gonna cook that one for a friend. Maybe don't swirl it as much. Maybe I over swirled it because, oh, here comes the part. This person's getting green. I mean, blue and a little bit of green on the top. Okay, there's another rainbow piece. I think I learned that maybe this one was over swirled, so maybe baking it without swirling it so much. Oh, look at this guy, he's getting yellow. Oh my God. So maybe you just take a little bit of each piece like that and you'll have your rainbow cake. Should I try it? All right, I'm gonna give it a try. I bet it's gonna be delicious, ready? It's a little bit cold right now, but it's still gonna be good. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Rainbow cake. Give it a try. Until next time. Bye. Happy cooking. I'm back. I forgot to tell you one thing. I love cooking. I love reading. I love books and cooks. I could do this. I could do one every day for the whole year and never run out of ideas. So this morning, when I was out for my run, I accidentally kicked this round gray stone. And when I kicked it, I picked it up and I said, got it, I know what my next recipe is going to be. Stone soup. I'm gonna read you this book, or you could read it ahead of time if you want, stay tuned. I am literally going to start my soup with water and a stone and I am going to make the most delicious stone soup. And if you watch me and you do it for your family, I promise you they're gonna love this soup better than any soup you've ever bought in a can. So be, be ready for my next cooking activity, stone soup. Go get yourself a stone because you're going to need it. Bye.